My brother Ellis recently got a job in my city that required an immediate start. He didn't have the time or money to find a place on such notice and his partner Taylor just had a baby a few months ago, so he didn't want to leave her alone. So we asked if they could stay at my place for a couple of months to get situated. Ellis is a responsible guy who doesn't take advantage of people, so I felt okay saying yes. Ellis, Taylor, their baby, and Taylor's daughter all moved in. Before they came, I made it clear that I would not tolerate them doing any sleep training or cry it out stuff with the baby. If the baby cries, you need to make an immediate and reasonable effort to soothe him. The other rule was that Taylor was responsible for any damage her daughter did in the house. You would think this would be obvious, but we've had previous incidents. The final rule was that neither I nor my husband would be doing any childcare. I'm a stay-at-home mom to my daughter and have a side business and my husband works very hard. Just because we're home doesn't mean we're available to provide childcare. I thought it went without saying that they would be responsible for themselves in all other ways. They accepted all the conditions and moved in. It took two weeks to go downhill. Sometimes I'd have to get up at night to wake Taylor and Ellis to get the baby. Taylor's daughter has also not adjusted well to the move and is constantly playing sick to avoid going to school. Then, because she's not really sick, she spends the day causing havoc. Despite agreeing she wouldn't, Taylor has been bugging me to help with the kids. She's also been expecting her and her kids to be cooked and cleaned for. So, it was two weeks before I got annoyed and another two weeks before I was on edge. What tipped it over was earlier this week. I was picking my daughter up early from school and going out, and Taylor asked me to take her daughter with me. She said she was drowning in things to do, the baby was fussing, and she needed a break. I said no, Taylor swore at me, and I just left. When we got back a few hours later, the first thing I hear is the baby crying. I go into the nursery, no Taylor. Her daughter is watching TV on the couch and crying, no Taylor. My kitchen is a mess, no Taylor. I frantically searched the whole house only to find Taylor locked in a closet. She said she couldn't take it and needed a break. I called Ellis and told him to get his butt home. I sat them down and said they had to go. I said I would chip in for a hotel, but I can't do this anymore. Ellis thinks I'm being an idiot going back on the deal, but he and Taylor haven't held up their end. I feel bad because I don't want to stress Ellis out in his new job, but I'm going crazy. I hate being in my own home. Am I the idiot for putting my foot down? Not the idiot. They didn't hold their end of the deal. On the other hand, your sister-in-law has no other people to rely on. I feel for her, but this does not give her the right to dump everything on you. It would be your brother's responsibility, regardless of the new job. The fact that you had to call your brother to come deal with his family is evidence enough. Do not pay for the hotel. He has an income. Yeah, sounds like Taylor has PPD. Ellis needs to step up and support his family better. Locking herself in a closet and leaving two small children unattended isn't a normal reaction. It's a pretty big red flag. She's spiraling hard and I've been there. Sadly, her husband seems pretty useless because he's used to her doing all the parenting with her own daughter, so he assumed it would be that way with the baby. Personally, I'd be helping Taylor with her kids. I wouldn't throw them out when she and her daughter are mentally unwell, unhappy, so I do judge OP somewhat for being heartless. Still, she did set expectations beforehand, and I suspect her brother sold her a pig in a poke. Everyone's the idiot here, except Taylor. People need to understand that it's not OP's job to burn themselves out to provide help to their sister-in-law. If sister-in-law can't cope with one child, she shouldn't have had another. If the sister-in-law has PPD, then her own husband needs to seek help for her. It's not OP's job to pick up the slack and then OP becomes burnt out and needs help. You cannot warm another by lighting yourself on fire. This is really bizarre. My girlfriend, 23, and I, 25 male, were about to go out. She wore a red polka dot dress, matching headband and a little bow. She asked me, how do I look? I replied, really cute, like Minnie Mouse. I meant it very lightheartedly because, you know, Minnie Mouse is cute and the outfit really resembled what she wore. She looked me dead in the eyes and asked, did you just call me a rat? I was baffled. At first, I thought she was kidding. I said, no, I just pointed out that you look like Minnie Mouse, you know, the Disney character. She said, so I look like a rat to you? I still thought she was kidding. I said, actually, Minnie is a mouse. They're a different species. She lost it. She started yelling at me, calling me names, saying that if anyone was a rat, it was me and that I belonged to the sewers, not her. I stood there with my car keys in my hand, not realizing a thing. Eventually, she grabbed her purse and left. It happened an hour ago. I called her a few times, but she didn't answer. She probably blocked me. 
I'm still trying to figure out what happened. She has no long-standing grudges against Disney. She doesn't seem to hate rats as a species either. Minnie Mouse isn't even a rat. I know it sounds like a fake story, but I swear it's not. I'm genuinely baffled and am now wondering if I messed up. Bullet dodged, my guy. Take this for what it was. The universe conspired to lift the veil and show you what you will be in store for if you continue this relationship. If ever there was a moment to read the room and understand that the rattling you hear in the corner is a rattlesnake in your midst, this is it. Block her and move on. You are not the idiot. Amen. Unless OP loves drama, walking on eggshells, and thin ice every single day of his life, run. The girl put on an outfit, red polka dot dress and matching bow, that Minnie Mouse has been wearing in some variety for about 50 plus years. Then she got mad when you commented on exactly what she did. Dude, that damn Disney magic save you from someone who was going to be a headache you didn't deserve. Opie should just change her contact in his phone to Minnie Mouse. Either something else is going on and she took it out on you, she genuinely believes you insulted her, in which case she's probably having head issues, or she was looking for a reason to pick a fight or break up. Either way, I'd let it go and move on. If she contacts you, if she doesn't explain or apologize, I'd move on, especially if she's still blaming you. Sometimes someone is just too unstable to be in a healthy relationship. My 26 male girlfriend, 24, dropped out of college in the middle of her second year and is still trying to figure out her life phase. I admit I don't really know how to treat that since my parents have always been very strict about taking as many AP classes as we can until the age of 16, 10th grade, so that we'll be able to do what we want and to come to them the summer before 11th grade with a plan that details every class we will take to get us to the degree that we want and a general plan of what we want to do before getting the degree, while getting the degree and after getting the degree. My girlfriend never really understood my parents doing that since her parents have never really cared as long as she was happy and surviving. And while it took me some time to understand as well, seeing as me and my siblings are all very successful, I'm thankful for that. The problem started a few days ago, five months into our relationship, when she officially met my family. She'd seen my sister a couple of times when she came to crash at my place because she needed quiet to study. She's in her last year of medical school, but they didn't really talk much. Both of my parents are lawyers and our house is very fancy. It always looks put together and like no one lives there since they have meetings there sometimes. Next to my girlfriend's house, which always looks homey and very lived in, she was rightfully a little freaked out. By the end of the night, I could see that my girlfriend finally understood just how different our upbringings were. I drove her home after and before she got out of my car, she asked me not to make her go to my parents' house anymore. I asked her why, because while I had a clue, I didn't want to make assumptions. She said that it freaks her out and wouldn't elaborate. I pushed a little and she snapped that it made her look bad and feel like she wasn't good enough for me. I was shocked. I told her that just because my parents have more money than her doesn't matter and that she makes enough money to live comfortably and be happy and that's all I want from a partner. She told me it's not just that, it's my whole family. My brother is a surgeon, my sister wants to be an anesthesiologist and I work in the biggest bank in the country. We all make, or are going to make in my sister's case, her yearly salary in a month, it's an exaggeration, and that she doesn't know if she can live feeling like that. I was mad at that point and told her it wasn't my fault that she decided to drop out of college and now can't get her life together. It's not true, she has a fantastic life and I know that, but I was so mad that I didn't notice what I was saying. She didn't say anything and just walked out. I feel really bad, but I also feel like I was justified. She was talking bad about the way my parents raised me and I will always protect my parents against everything. I need to know, am I the idiot? You are the idiot. 24 is still very young and it's okay that she doesn't have everything figured out yet. I just take issue with how you speak about your family and upbringing and how you compare it to hers. You do talk like you think she's less than you and your family. If you don't care enough about this young woman to see things from her point of view and not as though your family is better than hers, seriously, you talk about them like they could do no wrong and like their life is gilded, then maybe you shouldn't be together. It feels like you think she's less than you and your family as opposed to being an equal in your eyes, if not in fortune. I mean, she was trying to use how she felt about herself as a reason to not go to his parents' house again. So what? He can only ever go to dinner with them if she's not there? It was an unreasonable ask, and I don't blame him for getting a little defensive about his family and upbringing. I think everyone's the idiot here. Thank you. 
I don't know why everyone is overlooking that she was judgmental in issuing a blanket statement that they would never spend time with his family again, especially when they've been together a mere five months. It isn't like she tried to talk about how insecure she was feeling, but instead demanded she never wanted to see his family again, and she's the idiot for that. LOL, right, a tale as old as time. Wealthy, successful young adult assumes all their wealth and success comes from personal virtue, not the safety net and support of their rich, successful parents. He doesn't even have to help her. Maybe he just acknowledges that he grew up with the privilege of caring for parents who had the financial backing to help their kids get to where they are now. Plenty of intelligent, hard-working kids don't make it to be surgeons, top bankers, or lawyers because they don't have the safety net for a single slip-up. OP, you are the idiot. My wife is a housewife and is in charge of all the chores since I usually leave around 7 in the morning and return at around 7 in the afternoon as I work long hours. That's simply the nature of having your own firm and the commute is an hour both ways. So recently my wife wanted to use her English degree to use and try and publish a book, which I thought she was doing as something to pass the time. So over the past few weeks, chores like the dishes and dusting haven't been getting done and started piling up. So I decided to talk to her about it. She told me that I have to start doing some of the chores too as she's working now. I told her that that was not a job but a hobby until she started making money. I tried to tell her that we agreed she would take care of the house while I made the money. She got mad at me about this and claimed I was belittling her. I tried to defend myself by explaining I'm not mocking her, but that's just a fact that her writing doesn't make any money, meaning it's not a real job and just something she does for her own enjoyment for the time being. After some back and forth, she got even more mad at me and decided to sleep in the guest room for the time being. She is generally a bit annoyed with me, but has started to take care of the chores. So, am I the idiot for telling my wife she doesn't have a job, she has a hobby? Edit, for full transparency, we do have a young grammar school-aged daughter together, but she goes to school at around 7.35 in the morning and comes back almost 5pm in the evening after her extracurriculars, so my wife only watches her for about two hours without me each day which is why I refer to her as a stay-at-home wife and not mom. Not the idiot. If OP was a house husband telling his wife that he wanted to be a streamer by playing video games and expected his wife to pick up the chores, y'all would be jumping at his throat. There are no little kids involved, daughters at school, meaning that out of 24 hours of the day, she has to spend at most three quarters of an hour cleaning and the rest sitting on her butt. Plenty of time to write. If she wants to split chores, she needs to find a job so that you can cut your working hours. Here's a real idiot move. Tell her you will take on half of all household chores and that she's now responsible for half of all household expenses and her own discretionary spending. Wish her well in her new job and cut her off from all your income. That would be an idiot move. Your wife has such a cushy life. Asking her to contribute by doing chores is not an overreach. I have three people at home right now. My daughter is going to college and my son and his wife are staying to save money. The issue is with my son and his wife. They eat so much and frankly it's a concerning amount. What I usually did before they moved in was to make a meal, everyone ate and then packed up leftovers in the fridge. The food is gone by the time I even try to get seconds. Sometimes I make food, my daughter ain't home and it's all gone. I sometimes make big meals that can feed four to six people with leftovers. For example, I made a pound of spaghetti with meat sauce. I didn't even get any. I didn't grab any and I was going to eat after I finished some chores. My daughter wasn't home and those two ate a whole pound of spaghetti. I had a two-layer cake, almost all of which was there and went to work. The cake was almost gone when I got home. That was less than eight hours. My daughter is very frustrated since there's never any cooked food. I've made double batches which give leftovers but they don't last. The next day the leftovers are gone. It's hurting my wallet and I'm over it. I don't want to charge for groceries since that won't solve the issues with leftovers, or if they eat everything before anyone has the chance to eat. So I sat everyone down and told them I would place everyone's food. The leftovers would be split evenly and labelled clearly. If anyone was still hungry, they could buy more food to eat. I implemented it today. My daughter and I loved it because we could eat and have leftovers. They hated it and are still hungry. This started an argument and they thought I was a huge idiot. Not the idiot. It makes no sense to cook if those intended don't get to eat. So plating and labelling leftovers seems reasonable to ensure everyone gets to eat. I think it's weird that your son and his wife would think it's okay to eat all or most of the food when you and your daughter hadn't had a chance to eat anything. 
That was so inconsiderate of them. Two layer cake. That means they ate about 3,000 calories each as a snack. I'd be wondering out loud, very loudly, that they should go to the doctor. Maybe they both have a tapeworm. That's absolute gluttony they're displaying. You're not a restaurant or a buffet. It's time for son and wife to spread their wings and leave the nest. They should learn about self-reliance and how much their lack of self-control costs. Keep doing what you're doing. Either die on this hill or die us on this hill. Your choice. They hated it and are still hungry. But, but, what about all of the money they're saving? They should be able to supplement their appetites themselves. Time to either cut these moochers loose or cut them off of cooked meals.